to break the Titan's iron grip on this world, not steal their children's future as they did ours. I was just offering this whelp a chance to serve our cause and spare his people a gruesome yet delightful massacre. Yeah. <laughs> For <rock>. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting for. <laughs> so be it. I'll find another way into their precious dream. And then the power that grows within. So, I mean, it's no surprise, if you've been paying attention, uh, you know that, uh, I want to go back a ways here, um, you know that the next thing you, knew, you saw about the world tree, you knew that there was going to be an attack, and clearly Farak would have had to have been dealt with at some point, um, and also setting a veer not to be the one who seems to be sticking to a plan that it looks per like perhaps Eridicron and Farak are no longer on, or never, and Eridicron's case, maybe never were. Um, I stopped on this particular shot because if you look at um, Farak's eyes, there's some voidy stuff coming out of it, and you see that twice during the cinema. Um The first is when he's alone with Garanthus? Anyway, Marithra's son. The void starts coming out as he starts to inflict pain uh, on him. Um, and I, I'm, I'm kind of glad I stopped it on just let me in because my first question is, is we're pretty sure, I mean, we, we're sure Farak was kind of wild to begin with. Um, there's no doubt he was. <laughs> he saw that before he ever went in Derla Caverns. Uh, and then he sucked up a bunch of Shadow Flame. And we know what Shadow Flame did to Neltharion. Um, now, and this kind of ties into where I'm going with this. Um, I'm just thinking back to the first, you know, first cinematics we saw with um, Nosdormu speaking to Emberthal and finding out that Neltharion 
was corrupted before they left the Dragon Isles, well, long before uh, they even thought. Um, but when he gave into it, it was as a defensive measure. Uh, and we find out in Abarus that he was tinkering with it. He was, you know, clearly reaching out to the void. He probably in his hubris, which, you know, as much as we know about it, we know this much is true. He probably thought he could harness it and control it. In the end, it overcame him. He fell to corruption and became, you know, a, a servant of the old gods and, and, and thus the void. Um, so in his case, he associated himself with void, uh, the void. I was going to say magic, but it's way beyond that. Um, as a defensive me measure to gain power to defend the flights and Azeroth. Uh, thinking he can harness it and control it and then finding out he couldn't and then eventually succumbing to it. Um, so started, and I think they're, they're kind of driving to the point of where they want to flesh that out a bit more. They haven't really come and drawn that line, but I think we're not done looking at that. We're, we're, what we're seeing is like, ugh, his legacy is death. It's horrible. Whatever happened is bad. I think we still have a little bit more to see of, you know, why he started tinkering with the void to begin with. Um, and that it, I don't think we're going to end it with was it was just because he wanted power. Because we see in that first cinematic with those Dormu that it was used as a defensive measure against the Incarnates. So there's that. And we don't know if the other Incarnates knew that that's what Razageth fell to when she was captured. We don't, but they seem to have been aware that he was messing around with Shadowflame. We do get that impression, because Eridacron sends him. At least they, if they either just found out or they've known to some extent, they knew he was doing something there. Um, so Riddick, um, Ferrat goes down, goes and bait. He's already not quite hinged, and <laughs> sucks up all the Shadow Flame. Becomes a lot more powerful. And I think what we're seeing with Farak is a contrast with Neltharion's past. Like, c parallels, but also a contrast. And I, I, that's my theory, is that that's what we're going to see. Uh, Farak went in there just hungry, just wanting it, just, you know, wanting the power, just no other reason not to do anything good, just I'm going to F shit up. Uh, and by the way, uh, major kudos to Matt Mercer, who just is enjoying every effing minute of this performance. I mean, they're, all the voice acting is fantastic. But, like, Mercer did not have to go where he went with this. It, it's amazing. Um, but here's where the two key points is. He's here, he's causing pain. He says, just let me in. It could mean just let me into where the, the, the world tree is. Into the Emerald Dream. But the fact that there's Void Eyes going on, I'm thinking... You know, we know, let me in, we know that they like to get into your thoughts, they like to get into your head, they like to mess with you and manipulate you. So I'm reading this as two things. Uh, also, he does it again. Ian, calm yourself, brother. Well, let me stop there because one second. You notice he turns it off and it's wondering... Is he aware of the Void influence or not? Or is he at that point where he's not even sure what's going on? He's just giving in to whatever that urge is. That urge that we've seen, we saw play out, you know, in the caverns with, uh, you know, all the brothers of the Black Dragon fight. Um, so, yeah, if we don't know at this point if Frack, even if he cares one way or the other, um, how much of what he's doing is him, how much of it is his corruption, and how much is, is the void itself influencing the situation. But let's continue. We are meant to break the Titan's iron grip on this world, not steal their children's future as they did ours. I was just offering this whelp a chance to serve our cause. And spare his people a gruesome, yet delightful massacre. And there it is again. 
Yeah, it's like it shows up at the point in which he is about to go all in. And I mean, that that's telegraphing void influence right there. And um, I'm just saying, I think it, uh, it it's I think a parallel is being drawn, but also a contrast. And I, I don't know. I could be wrong. They, they may never remember, never hear about um, Neltharian again, but I don't think so. Because I, I'm, you know, I haven't done it yet because it's still a mythic, but I will do it next week. <laughs> I was too afraid to jump, to try to jump into a group. All of them are like, must know fights. And I'm like, I watch videos. Um, uh, Dawn of the Infinites. And um, in there... Oh god, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> I guess I had to be whining about the fact that I hadn't done it yet. Um Oh yeah, so in there you see Neltharian talk about how he's always going to protect their flight and always look out for their flight. And I think that's how his whole you know, his whole journey started that way. I was always gonna protect Azra, I was gonna protect the dragons. And in the effort to do that, he tried to get more powerful by tampering with the void which he thought he could control, and in the end, it controlled him. For Rack, there's none of that <laughs> part getting to the getting controlled part. So we see his fall, um, though he didn't have far to fall, a lot quicker, and the process a lot quicker. I, I think we are still going to see snippets of before Notharian. Um like now we've seen the progression like how he fell and how when like at the point of where he thought he still had control to the point of where he fell we've seen that um i think we're going to and i hope so see more of the what was he like we hear alex Strauss talk about how different he was how he used to be i think and i hope we actually do get to see it and i think you know, as much as like his legacy is death, let's just forget it. Let's forget about all of it. I think there's still a part of the flight that needs to see that where they came from was once noble, and you get a hint of that with um, Veridistras and no, no, Veraxian. I'm in Veraxian and Veridistras, but um, Veraxian's desperately looking for something for more power. But instead, with Veridistras's help, uh, this is the red dragon that you talk to. He's on the ledge. You get the quest. Um, and Varaxian is at the Zaskara vaults and you start finding pieces of him and you can continue all the way through Zarathem. It's worth it if you haven't done it. Uh, at some point I am going to put a video up about it because <laughs> I did record all of all of it. Um, it's a great little side story that's easily missed. It's not you know obligatory to do. Um, but it's great if you do because it fills in a lot of, a lot of things. Um, Varaxian is part of Sibelian's crew. He's a black dragon and he's not like a big fighter. Uh, so he goes and tries to find other ways to help out, other ways to contribute to the power of his flight. And um, he finds an object, he doesn't know what it is, but you, if you had already met Fridistraz, you get the option of saying, hey, I, I know a red dragon, he might know what this is. And Through the whole thing, Fridistraz overcomes some of his grief. He used to be friends with a black dragon who became corrupted, and yeah, it, it, it's, oh, it's, it's just good, you should look it up. Um, there's a whole little story that's just wonderful and brilliant. But Varaxian finds out that, yeah, my flight did a lot of horrible things to be ashamed of. But there were also these other things to be proud of. Um, and it's coming to terms that it wasn't all terrible. It wasn't all horrible. That there is there was some good. And when it was good, it, when it was good, it was a great thing. They were protectors. They were, they were the... They were the rebels. They, as far as like, they were the the ones that would challenge thought and art and be the you know the not not like the rebels and agitators and like the annoying um, teen way. I <laughs> we'll say that I should say that it's terrible. Teens are very very valid concerns. Um, but yeah, no, it, it but in genuine going against the status quo way, um, and. Yeah, yeah, and I think it would be actually pretty neat to see that part of the history again and see the current, you know, Black Dragon flight, see that and go, oh, it wasn't all that. It wasn't all the terrible stuff. It's, it's also this great rich history. And right now you only get to see it if you do this little side quest. 
And but I, so I think it is going to be be in the game. I'm hoping in a larger respect, because it would be nice to see. Anyway, point is drawing parallels. Neltharion wasn't 100% horrible all the time. He his fall was a tragic one, not an expected one, because he was just arrogant. I think his hubris did think he could control something he couldn't, and that was the reason for his downfall. But his intent was good, as opposed to Farak, who is just wants to f shit up. <laughs> is an agent of chaos and is a perfect agent of the void for this purpose. 